I'm going to show you how to make a mortise and tenon joint. This joint is a frame joint. It's one we use throughout furniture making. And um, this, I'm going to make a mortise hole in this one and a tenon in this one using a handful of tools. And first off, I'm going to take this just to give me a distance here like this. So I'm pencil line and I'm pencil line, just two marks to get me in close approximation to where the mortise hole is going to go. Pull the two lines across the whole of the surface, transfer onto the adjacent face, across the whole face so that you can transfer to the opposite side. This is going to show the delineation of the width of the mortise. So we're going to cut an elongated hole in here from this side and the other side. So on the end of this piece that's going to go into this, so this is going in here, I want the distance of the thickness it's going to go through in this case. So again, just finger on the outside, flushing it with the outside edge and a small mark and the rest is all done with the square. Check your corner to make sure you line up on the corner. This one is, is, is lining up fine, but it's actually not the finished line. That's just the rough guideline that I'm going to use to run my pins to, to form uh, the distance of the thickness of the tenon. So let me take you through that step. I'm going to cut a half inch mortise and a half inch tenon. It's going to be made to the width of this chisel. This is a half inch chisel, which is about 13 millimetres. So I go right in between the tips of these two pins, not the base, but the tips. So I am just in between those two points. I don't want to be over by very much if at all, but I do have to go right in between the very tips there. So I'm right in between the tips. So now these two points have to be equidistant from both sides. So I eyeball this distance here, first from one side and then the other. And I move the beam to get the pins eyeballed to center. That's just a guess to get it to the center. And I make two pin points in the surface here. Then I take this and I come from this side to see how close I am. And I'm about one millimeter off center. So I have to move the stock yet again to get that distance, to halve that distance. So slacken off and just move it. Which direction did I need to go? Check again. So I need a little bit extra length on the stem, a half a millimetre, and do the same again. And I keep doing this until the two points meet. Now I'm right on now this time, so let me show you this. Let me show you on this face here. So I put my two points, my dots in the surface there, and then I turn it around until those two dots are lined up. So I've just dropped into them. So I've got the exact distance I want from e each side. Very, very important. Cinch everything tight. Make sure there's no slippage. And registering the stock against the face. Push. And on this, you can go quite hard. I'm going on the edge of my bench. I'm registered here. I can put pressure on here. My thumb is going on the gauge here. This hand is moving laterally to keep it square against the face. And I use my thumb for that micromanagement of pressure that gets me across the top. So now I have my two lines here. On this face, I have my two lines. So now I just have two more to run 
on this face, registering all the time against the same registration face, just in case I'm slightly off center, out of square or whatever, this gives me the definitive line. So all the lines line up on the corners. That's one done. Here's my mortise hole. So I'm going to set this. I know it's already set in between those two lines, over end for end. So I'm registering against the same face and run the next two lines. And these are the lines that I want to chop the mortise to in between the cross cut lines there and there. So this, you can start seeing how this now is going to fit into this mortise hole here. And I just need to remove the waste parts to form the joint. So you always cut the mortise hole first because the mortise hole is very rarely changed inside. It's governed by the exact uh, width of the chisel and inside the hole we don't usually pair inside the hole. So I'm going to my knife and I'm going to create the extreme wall for the width of the mortise. I'm going here like this then I'm going to put my piece of wood on here, up against the, ba the blade, and I'm going on this side, make a small nick just to lodge my chisel in. Now I'm going to switch hands here. You may not be ambidextrous, but I'm going to go into this side. You could turn your piece of wood around, make your knife wall, and that's showing the exact width of the tenon. I'm going to make a small nick on the corner here, into my knife nick here, slide up to it till it starts to make a small nick here. This is giving me the exact width I want for the opposite side. Slide your knife right into that nick, make a nick here. So this isn't going to be seen. There won't be a knife mark seen particularly strongly on the outside. This goes in between. Can you see here? There's a slight variance here, I'll show you in a second, between the actual pencil lines because the knife wall is absolutely definitive. So if I roll this here, can you see the pencil line is about a millimetre off, which is quite a lot really, and the same on this one, half a millimetre here. But I do know that this knife wall is exactly transferred from the other side and that I'm exactly on course now. So here, into the vise, I'm chopping in the vise. You can chop on the bench top if you want to. I like the vise, it's a good heavy vise, very solid. So I don't go into the knife wall, I go about one eighth of an inch away, bevel in the direction I'm traveling, and I chop. And then I move over another eighth of an inch, right in between the gauge lines, and I chop. And then I chop one more time, like this, those can't be flicked out, they're not deep enough. I go about the, back to that first chop that I made there and I chop down here, back into here and just lever out the bulk of the waste. Now my knife wall is very much exposed and I can go into my knife wall gently here. Then I move away about two millimeters and chop hard. So I've chopped hard because I don't want to move that knife wall and this has created a space for my knife, to my chisel cut all the way down into the mortise hole. Now that didn't move it, but it stayed right on course. So now I lever and I keep levering after a chop, chop vertical and just lever. So this is ever deepening now because each one of these chop guts cuts goes down past the previous one by about one eighth of an inch. My chisel cut is perpendicular, the bevel is sliding the chisel over so inside the cut I have a 30 degree angle because watch what happens, it moves over 
in the cut, even I'm vertical here, can you see? I'm vertical here, if I take this out and show you inside the cut, you can see the slope of the mortise here, right along that inside. Very important that you see that, because you'll see that that's commensurate to the bevel of the chisel. And that, that act of chopping that way is moving the fibre out of the way the whole time. So now I can lever the waste right out of the hole and we can see how much deeper we're going with each cut. I'm going through one and three quarter inches of material here. So you can see me sloping the chisel slightly to compensate there like that. It doesn't matter, you're going to do that. You'll be feeling that when you start chopping. I'm two millimetres away from my line. So now, I don't want to leave it on this outside edge because I'll bruise that wall. So I come in here. I've turned my chisel around so the bevel is now on this side. So I chop. And I get more and more vertical. Now I'm going right into the knife wall here. And I'm chopping, I'm vertical. So now I'm down in that, how deep am I down in this cut? I am 7 eighths of an inch, which is about 23 millimetres. So quite a long way in from where I started. So I have a slope down inside this cut now. So we'll show you, just clean out a little bit of the waste. So we sloped in the cut as we went down. So that may seem a little negative, you may think, oh, I didn't really want that, but watch what happens now. I go with the vertical bevel about a third of the way along, and I chop at this angle, and that chop takes it straight down. I lever in the bottom, I lever, so I'm moving along about one-eighth of an inch again, just like I was before. Just flick out the waste. These are nice. Let me show you what we get. I can't lever against this outside face. So here, my bevel is vertical. Then right in on the last cut is a vertical, a perpendicular cut that actually takes me down to a very comparable distance, 7 eighths of an inch again, 22, 23 millimetres, very close. Take a smaller chisel, just a, th a 3 eighths in here, lift out the excess waste from here and here. And you can see inside here now, nice, crisp, clean depth. Seven eighths is exactly halfway of half of one and three quarter inches. So now, when I chop from this side, I'm already halfway through. Exactly the same from this side, about one eighth of an inch away. Chop, move another eighth, chop and lever just a little bit, flick of the wrist, like this, and then. When you feel like you've gone enough, go back. I'm going to turn my chisel around a little bit here. That last one halves the distance. A little bit nearer to the line. So I don't move the knife wall. The knife wall will stay exactly where I want it to be, which is exactly the opposite to the other side. Start levering out the waist. Make space then for your bevel of the chisel. And if you look at these, they're very, very uniform. These pieces have chopped out. They're very, very uniform. Notice I don't clean up the walls because I want the width of my chisel to govern the width of the opening. So I'm listening now because I must be 
closing in on moving all the way through to the other side. Turn my chisel around. There, I could hear it went through then, so I know. Listen. So I'm through. I pull the waist away from the shoulder line so I don't bruise that outside rim ever. Pull it halfway along, maybe a little less. See, that sounds too much to me, but I move nearer to the breakthrough point. Bevel is now vertical. Last bit, I just turn my chisel around, go right on the knife wall and chop cleanly. This doesn't look clean inside. You can see the fuzzy bits on the wall. Can you see inside there? And that, that's going to hang up the tenon. I usually just go in with the same chisel I was chopping with and just pull it across like this. And that will usually clean off the walls all the way through from one side to the other. That's it. And that's given me a clean inside of the mortise hole like that can you see in there it's great this is the mortise is cut I may have to trim a little bit after I'm not sure yet so now I'm going to make the tenon usually I cut my shoulder lines for my tenon first not the wall so I'm going to take this piece of wood off of this here flush it on the outside here to the lowest point. So if the end is actually, in this case, it's slightly out of square. So I'm going to go to the bottom of that out of square aspect. I'm going to make a shoulder line across here. Now this is an internal shoulder line, so you can, you can make this shoulder line all the way around because with it being the internal corner, it's not going to be seen I work a lot, I spend a lot of time preparing my wood to make sure everything is perfect. And the reason I do is because I want this corner here, I want these to line up perfectly. If they don't line up perfectly, something is going to be wrong. So I've got those cut, this line, not quite far enough along here. And now I'm going to cut my shoulders with a tenon saw, but I'm going to delineate these shoulder lines again. Every time you make a cross grain cut, it always starts with a knife cut. Then you go to your tenon saw, put my finger right up against the shoulder and the saw plate and run my finger, run the saw plate along my finger or my thumb just until I've penetrated deeply enough for the kerf to guide itself and then I work to my vertical wall. I don't want to go past here. Can you see my saw cut stopped dead on the gauge line? I don't want to cut into this face Cutting into this face and this face would be quite negative for me because it's making the tenon strength slightly under strength.
traditionally, this would always be sawn. The, the, the cheek of the tenon would have always been sawn. And uh, that's what we're going to do here. So across the top, I'm cutting on the waist side of my line. This is the bit that we're removing here. So I'm cutting on that side of the gauge line, the point on the gauge line. So in other words, my tenon is likely to be slightly fat. I go across the top and then I start dropping my hand down the gauge line You can go from both sides here like this. Just to help you saw. Same on this one. Cross the top, get it good and square, then start dropping your hands gradually with each stroke down this face so we've basically gone corner to corner reorient either your work or your body down this face here so we're following the line I squeeze this against the plate to keep it nice and tight Now there, maybe I'm close, there. On this face here, usually on these shoulders, it's going to be slightly fuzzy right in here. So usually what we do is we go in with a chisel, a wide chisel, and just pair this face to get rid of any undulation from the saw curve as we prepare the shoulder. So. I'm going to do this one here, then I'll show you from this face here. This is not the usual way, but it's so you can see what I'm actually doing. So I go in here and I just pair these shoulders just a hair to get rid of any surface fibres. Now I'm hoping this tenon is slightly fat, because if it is, I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. So here, it's too wide, it's too thick to go in the mortise hole. So what I'm going to do, I could either pare this down with a chisel, do it this way, like this. I can pare across the, across the grain like this. Looking at my gauge line the whole time to make sure I'm not going too deep. So just flip that out of the way. So I've taken off a hair off this side. So that one's done. Does this help my mortise yet? It's probably very close, but I'm going to show you another method that I use a lot and that is this router here, I set this depth here, registering against this uh, flat surface here till it's just barely kissing the surface. I don't want to take anything off at this stage. Cinch it tight. Keeping this down flat against the surface, see I'm taking nothing off and then I turn it a half a turn and then another half a turn or quarter turn. Now it's biting. I don't take too much off. Keeping this right hand, my right hand hard down. This guarantees that this surface is parallel parallel to this surface, perfectly parallel. Go in here, let's see what we've got. So this is still tight, which is what I want. So now I'm going to do the same 
With the setting that I have on this, I'm going to do the same on here. Now that's quite a chunk. Oh no, maybe not. No. I thought it was more than that. So I'm I'm actually parallel from both sides. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. So this is a very useful tool and a very useful application for a tool that's never been designed for this. It's not its purpose but it functions so nicely so here I go carefully I can't really break out on that surface this time because the leverage is too much so I turn around and come from the opposite side like this and that probably is going to get me very close to fit. So this goes this way. So now we're actually going into the mortise. It's very close now. So I'm good for width, am I? Yes. That's great. So I think that's still too tight, but it's very, very close. I'm going to set this on here, slacken that stop off and turn it just a fraction of a turn. And that is about a thousandth, I think, close to about a thousandth of an inch. Hard to really measure. It's getting me very close. Yeah, that's great. But I want it to be even, and I know this is not going to be too much. Now let's see what we've got. Looks good. I'm going to go in the vise like this. And I'm going to start pressing here. And the reason I'm doing this is I want this kind of contact with my material. I want to check here, check this side. Looks good, looks like everything is aligning. So I'm applying pressure and I'm trying to feel inside this mortise hole for the kind of pressure. See what point it's pivoting at. It seems to be pivoting like somewhere like here. No, it's actually in the middle. So it's just a little tight but not too tight. So I keep applying pressure, listening, feeling until I'm down on that shoulder. And that's my mortise and tenon joint. Shoulders look good. The tenon is just barely protruding through. And I would probably just take a shaving off here just to Flush it with the outside of the surface. If you remember, it was slightly out of square. I'm actually planing against the grain there, so I'm going to turn around. And this joint now would be ready for assembling. And normally, it would get wedged at this stage. glued and wedged or a, a draw bore pin. That's my mortise and tenon joint. The shoulders are, this one is really good. This one is good too. Just needs a little extra help there. And that's got the shoulder perfectly tight. A mortise and tenon joint. Mm -hmm.